And pastors, I think, probably are the worst offenders. Heaven forbid we be seen as the voice of criticism or of judgment, unless, of course, we're laying down criticism and judgment on someone else outside. Them, not us. God forbid we offend someone or hurt their feelings or wound their self-esteem. Most pastors I know are very much people pleasers. And it would wound them to offend people. Offend their people. I am speaking from experience. It's the last thing I want to do, believe me. I'm also happy when everyone's happy when there's a potluck and it's hot and it's wonderful and everyone is in one accord. Happy pastor. Absolutely. Well, God the Father was speaking to His Son Jesus when He said what He said, and I reckon that He meant it for Jesus. I don't think He thought of me when He said it. I am not Jesus, as likable and as people-pleasing as I may be. The Spirit might come down, but not visibly, at least upon me. I wouldn't last two days in the wilderness. There's only one way that I can get in on that good affirmation of Jesus. And that's to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow Jesus. Deny myself, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. To be a part of the body of Christ. Not my own, part of the body. And that includes people all around me, people besides me, people I did not choose to be here with me to be part of that. When I do that, then that blessing comes upon me. When I'm part of the body of Christ, all the promises of Jesus come and pertain to me. Eternal life, divine rule, power, glory, all of that. It belongs to me as long as I am part of that body. Apart from that, I'm nothing at all and worthy of no affirmation whatsoever. But when I am inside that body, everything changes. I can pray. I can work, I can live, love, I can play as a beloved child of God in the body of Christ. I've got no more affirmation or blessing than the next person, than any one of you here. But we've both, all of us here, have a ton more of that than those outside who may or may not believe in God, who may or may not have committed themselves to the body of Christ, or who have not, rather, committed themselves to the body of Christ in a local context, committed to real people forming a real church in a real place. Now, how many Christians do we know that don't go to church because for one reason or another they don't like this or they don't like that, they don't like the pastor, the people are cold, this, that, they don't like the music, what not, find all manner of different reasons to stay home and not participate in the body of Christ. Because it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's difficult sometimes. People can be difficult. The Spirit can be difficult. But we are Christ's body, and we share in Christ's blessing. We share in the cross, of course, as well. The body of Christ suffers more than an individual body. Because we've got more nerve endings here. We've got more heart. We've got more pain. We also have more joy and peace and love. We've got more of everything, bad and good. And so Jesus says again, and He'll say it again and again till the end of time. He'll say, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Now again, for individuals, this may or may not be true. The time may not be fulfilled for you be they believers in God or not, the kingdom of God may not have drawn near to you. It's possible. The invitation's there. But it's not a given for anyone. Again, where the body of Christ, though, where that body of Christ is, wherever it may be in time and space, wherever the body of Christ is, there the time is fulfilled. Right now the time is fulfilled. Right there the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you want in? Do you want a piece of that action? Do you want this for you and your family? Well, Jesus says, you repent and believe in the good news. Repent. Every one of us. 
Every day, the time is fulfilled right now. No matter how holy you are, how good you have lived, how generous your support has been, how many Bible studies, how many Sunday school classes, it is time to repent. You successful and well spoken of, you who live victoriously, enjoy the fruits of your success, spirit filled, born again, no matter what, repent and change your ways and trust in God. And to those who have ruined their lives through one failure or another, or one after the other, who find no hope in the future, who look out with fear and trepidation every morning, Jesus says, repent. Change your ways. Change your way of thinking. Find a new way. To the high and low both, turn around. Jesus does not tailor His message to individuals. He speaks to every one of us. Repent and believe. Turn and trust. And don't believe in God like we say, like Americans are so eager to say these days, but trust that God believes somehow in you. Believe that God has a plan somewhere that includes you, that will benefit you, that will change you. Believe that God will find a new way for you, a way that includes, that will include others you may or may not like. People you may not find suitable to you. Believe that God will draw you into God's own self. Someday, in the fullness of ecstasy, of communion with Jesus and the saints and the hosts of heaven. But today, in the struggle of communion with other pilgrims who are flawed and broken and dress differently from you and yet are still chosen to walk this path beside you. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus says this today. He will say it all the way through St. Mark's Gospel. He has says it, from, says it from the day He was baptized to this moment in time today. It's as stripped down as essential as it will ever get, and it is a great place for us to start. As Lent begins today, you, church, the body of Christ, are my beloved child, and in you I am well pleased, thus says the Lord. So now repent. Every one of us, every time, together, and believe in this good news. Amen.